Hi guys, fair warning, this video might contain a bit of cussing because this thing has annoyed the heck out of me. Actually, scratch that, this video is most definitely going to contain a bit of cussing. Before we get to that, I want to show you some footage I recorded last weekend that'll explain to you what I'm trying to do here. But just to give you the Cliff Notes version, I'm trying to extend the range at which I'm able to access Wi Fi networks located ashore from my boat. I've had all of the parts for this project laying around for a while, just waiting for me to get around to putting it all together. For the past couple of weeks I've been experiencing some issues with my 4G internet connection here aboard the boat, and I figured I'd better get a move on and uh, put all of this together to have it as a backup internet connection. Down in the description there is a list of all these parts. Let's split this into two. The parts we have over here are mounted externally on the boat, and uh, the parts we have here are kept inside the boat. So on the outside of the boat we have a 12 dB omnidirectional antenna, and that's this big thing here. Now I don't really have anywhere where I can mount this on the boat where it wouldn't get in the way. So the reason I bought this already is because I want to do a bit of a comparison in the spring with this. And this is a 6 dB omnidirectional antenna. I think it'd be really cool to see the real world differences between these two. So moving on to the next thing on the exterior of the boat, we have the heart of the system. This is the uh, Groove 52 HPM, and uh, there it is, and we'll get back to this. And we have some Ethernet cable, and these are just some mounting brackets for the uh, big antenna. On the inside of the boat, we have a PoE injector, we'll get back to this. We have some Ethernet cable and just a random router or access point. I call the Groove 52 HPN the heart of the system for a reason. This is what we'll use to actually connect to any Wi-Fi networks ashore. One of the neat things about the Groove is that the antenna mounts directly on top of it, like this. This 6 dB omnidirectional antenna was included with the Groove, and uh, I'll start out using this because, like I mentioned, I don't really have anywhere where I can mount this. But this is a system I fully intend on bringing with me to my next boat, and uh, hopefully I can find somewhere to mount this on that boat. There is a similar product out there from a company called Ubiquity, and their product is called the Bullet. Now for this setup, either of those products would be perfectly fine, and I'm not going to poke the bear by suggesting that one product is better than the other. This is everything that's included with the Groove, and for once we actually have to read the manual. There's an IP address on there that we need to be able to configure this, so be sure to save this. There are some zip ties included, and then there's a way of powering the Groove, because this thing is powered using PoE, and that's power over Ethernet. Now, for the final setup, I'm going to use a different method, but for today I'm going to use this, because it's easier and I'll be able to show you everything here on the table. The fact that the Groove is powered using PoE means that we only have to run one cable, and that's this regular Ethernet cable. That connects to the Groove, and then we use this, or a similar thing, to inject power into the Ethernet cable. In the bottom of the Groove there's this small seal that you need to push out, and then you run your Ethernet cable through. So just to recap, the groove is mounted externally on the boat, and everything down here goes inside the boat. Now like I just mentioned, I won't use this PoE injector in the final setup. I'll use this instead. This will allow me to power the system off the battery here aboard the boat. Now I won't do the final installation today, but I'll show you how to hook this up, because it's real easy. You take the uh, Ethernet cable from the groove and plug it into the power plus data out. Then you take a separate Ethernet cable and use that to hook up the data in connection port to your router or access point, and then you hook this up to your battery aboard the boat. Now this thing supports a wide range of voltages, so in that regard it's very well suited for use aboard a boat. And that brings us to this little guy. Now the Groove will connect to a Wi-Fi network ashore, but it won't provide me with a Wi-Fi network that my devices here aboard the boat can join. For that I'll use this little guy. This thing really isn't anything special, it's just a very affordable, no thrills little router or wireless access point. It is very affordable, I think I paid the equivalent of $20 US for it. But that isn't the main reason I picked this. I picked this because it can be run off USB power. So this is everything hooked up. That looks quite simple, right? 
So for the next step, we actually have to disconnect this little router access point here because we need to configure the groove. This is connected to my shore power. For me to be able to configure the groove, I need to be able to access its web interface. And to do that, I need to hook up the ethernet cable to my computer. I've gone ahead and disabled the wireless connection here on my laptop. So next up, we need to assign ourselves an IP address so that we can in fact reach the uh, groove. So that's in network. And we'll choose the ethernet connection. We'll go manual. We'll enter an IP address of 192. Okay. The footage you just saw was shot six days ago and I had fully intended on finishing this video that day, but I ran into some issues. Now the Groove is not a consumer product. I knew that when I purchased the Groove, but well, I have a background as a software developer, so I'm not a networking specialist, but still I figured I'd be able to set up the uh, Groove without too many issues because what I want to do here is really simple. Plus I'd found some similar setups in some forum threads. What ended up being the root cause of all of my frustration wasn't a lack of knowledge of networking on my part. I think I've found what is a horrible bug in the web interface of the Groove. Now, I don't know if this afflicts any other firmware versions than the one I've got, and indeed I don't even know if it is a bug. It might also just be a piss poor design of a system. But what would happen was, when I was configuring the Groove, it would apply the configuration without me hitting the Apply Configuration button, and even without warning me. So the user experience I'm left with is just, well, the fact that my device just stops responding because it's assigned itself an IP address of 0000, and I can't reach it anymore. So, yeah, this that was really frustrating, and it actually took me quite a while to figure it out. And we're talking hours and hours of me just pulling my hair. So imagine at this point, I'm already kind of pissed off because I've been struggling with this device for hours and hours, right? And my experience is that it just stops responding all of a sudden, and that is very frustrating. So I finally had enough, and I head over to the official forum of the company that produces the Groove. And of course, they want me to create a user in their forum before I can post there, and that's perfectly reasonable. So I go to create a user. I put in a username, an email address, and I move further down their little page for creating a user. And then there's a simple, very primitive capture challenge where you're supposed to pick the highest number in a line of numbers, right? So that's perfectly reasonable, I do that. Then I move on to the next question, which is required that you answer this question also. And that's, what is the earliest OS version that you've used on one of our products or something like that? And well, how the heck am I supposed to know? It's, I know it's six dot something, right? So I just put six, but no, no, no. You're required to put in two characters. Thank you very much. Already, that's pretty bad. That's a pretty bad user experience right there, right? Because I'm basically just guessing here because it's such an annoying question. Okay, so uh, yeah, I move on to the next question and God help me. They feel the urge to present me with another CAPTCHA challenge. And this time the question is something along the lines of what is the product name of the hardware line that Mikrotech produces or something like that. And I'm just how the heck am I supposed to know? Why the f would you want people that's just trying to create a user in your forum to be able to answer that question? I had to go out on Google and spend a few minutes just searching to find the answer for that f***ing stupid question. If you have a company that produces a product and you have a forum, you can be damn certain that people come to that forum because they're having issues with your products. They're not coming there just to say, oh, thank you for a great product, guys. No, they're coming there because they're pissed already. So why the f would you want to make it any harder for them to create a user than you absolutely have to? Jeez. Okay, now I have a user in their forum. So I'm typing away and creating a pretty decent uh, forum post, very detailed and uh, just positive and polite and describing my observations and asking if anybody's up for helping me because remember at this point in time I still think that I'm doing something wrong and in reality that's a big reason of why I'm so frustrated right now and because I'm such a nice and optimistic kind of guy I even include four smileys. So I hit the submit button and long behold 
Your message contains too many smileys. The maximum number of smileys allowed is three. Why the f Come on! Who made you the smiley police? I mean, god dang it! Th that was just the straw that broke the camel's back. I'm in all likelihood gonna hate this company with a passion for the rest of my life just because they managed to piss me off time and time again. And it's just... Why? Why would you want to put... It? Why three smileys? Why set the limit there? Why not just say no smileys at all, buddy? God dang it. Okay, I delete one smiley. I'm allowed to create the post. But then I find out that a moderator will have to approve my post before it's published. Why have I just answered not one, but two capture challenges if you're still gonna require a moderator to approve my post? Come on, guys! That's... God dang it! <laughs> okay, I might have slightly embellished on the amount of anger I was feeling at the end there, but uh, honestly... <sighs> I am a bit annoyed with the company that puts out this product because it's been a pretty lackbuster experience so far. I did manage to configure the groove and I'll show you that configuration in just a few seconds. But before doing that, I want to mention that unless you're the kind of guy or girl that enjoys struggling with technical challenges, I'd probably steer clear of this product. And that is really a shame because I'd hoped that this video would turn into a easy to follow, very simple how-to guide that would enable almost anyone to configure one of these and put them on their boat. Because if you're in a marina where the Wi-Fi signal just isn't quite strong enough, well, one of these might be a good idea. But I wouldn't feel comfortable putting out a how-to guide that pretends that configuring one of these is simple, giving the experience I've had, that is. But um, yeah, I was thinking about how I might be able to turn this around to something positive, because in my eyes, this video is a bit of a failure. So I've come up with an idea, and please let me know down in the comments if you like that idea. So I could get my hands on a Ubiquiti Bullet. That's the competing product to this product that I mentioned a little bit earlier on in the video. And I believe the uh, Ubiquiti Bullet might be a little bit more user-friendly than this product. And uh, I could do a comparison between the two products, both how easy they are to configure, but also on the day-to-day -day use. So what's the performance like? And I figure I could do some tests here in the marina and uh, I could motor on out and drop the anchor and repeat those tests at set distances to the marina and stuff like that. So yeah, please let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. I'm going to run through the configuration of both the groove and the tiny access point fairly quickly because, well, chances are if you've made it this far in the video, you're probably a bit of a geek, just like me. <laughs> so uh, this is an application called Winbox, and I believe it's Windows only, but this version is compiled with Vine, so that's why I'm able to run it on my Mac. So the key thing here is to connect to the Mac address of your, the, your Groove instead of using the IP address. That'll save you all of the frustrations I mentioned a little earlier in this video. So go ahead and connect to the Mac address of your Groove. And in this quick set, set the mode to CPE, go ahead and uh, set the configuration mode to router, set the address acquisition on the wireless network to automatic, enter an IP address, the one you see here, remember to set the net mask and enable NAT. Go ahead and apply that configuration. Now once the uh, Groove boots up again, you'll be able to access the web interface of the Groove on this IP address. And I've got that right here. So this is where you'd normally go to connect to a new Wi-Fi network if you're in New Marina, for example. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to connect to my um, own little Wi-Fi hotspot here in the boat. I'll just hit connect. And there we go. The Groove is now connected to a Wi-Fi network. Now go ahead and disconnect your Ethernet cable from your PoE injector and hook that Ethernet cable up to your access point. And the configuration of your access point is going to be highly dependent on uh, what kind of access point you've got. So the bullet points here are go ahead and assign a static IP address to your access point. Go ahead and uh, set the default gateway to the IP address of the Groove and enable the uh, DHCP server on your access point and well, apply that and you're basically done.
I hope you've enjoyed my descent into madness and I am very much looking forward to doing a comparison between the bullet and the groove. I think that'll be quite interesting. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. See you! Jukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe. Please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order.